Hey friends, thanks so much for joining us. We have our good friend Rob Kirby from Kirby Analytics on the line. And the last time we spoke with Rob was back in May of 2013. And at that point we talked about full spectrum banker dominance. And boy, have things evolved and changed even since then, Rob. Welcome back. Uh, Nice to be with you, Sean. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. We've got uh, Rory on the line as well. Um, you know, I should tell you guys, we were watching a movie last night from Netflix. It's called Margin Call with Kevin Spacey. It came out a few years ago, and it really recounts the financial crisis which began in 2007 with the implosion of Bear Stearns. It recounts that entire implosion of the derivatives and the trillions and trillions that turned against the banksters. And uh, I guess I can't recommend the movie because it wasn't as intense as I think that those days really were. But boy, we're still suffering the repercussions of those days today, aren't we, Rob? I mean, we should talk about the fact that in 2013, the Fed bought 150% more treasuries than all foreigners combined. And we should talk about the fact that bankers are dropping dead like flies from high-rise falls and nail guns. It's just, since we've last talked, Rob, the world has really begun to melt down in earnest. Yeah, well, you you mentioned, Sean, we last talked last May. That was about 20 bankers ago. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe or there are boats. Yeah, or eighty. So, there's probably sixty undisclosed banksters that we don't know and, about. And, well, there, there's there's absolutely something to this, and and I mean, you know exactly what the story is. Uh, you know, it's 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 a bit of a tough call. Other than the the, the thing that's really stuck out to me, uh, particularly where J.P. Morgan or the deaths of J.P. Morgan bankers are concerned. It seems that the ones that we've heard about uh, uh, from J.P. Morgan, they seem to be involved in the uh, trading platform slash operations side of the bank's trading activity. Right. And it's the operations or trading platform side of the bank's activities where all the alg- algorithmic trading and program trading occurs. And, and this uh, b- by people who have uh, taken the time to uh, verse themselves in the manipulations of the of the cartel banks, the, uh, the gold bullion banks, uh, it's widely uh, assumed and, and spoken about in our community that it's it's algorithmic trading uh, that's used to suppress and control markets, specifically the precious metals, the equity indexes, and the ener- and the energy side. These dead bodies would have would have had a, a direct uh, vision. Uh, into the data and into into the trades uh, uh, that would have been involved in doing such things, uh, you know. Uh, I guess if you're Jeffrey Christian, you might say, but such things don't happen. So I guess he won't be he won't be trying to rationalize why the bankers are all dying, but but. People like us, I think, do ask these intelligent questions. Well, that's right. And, uh, you know, on that note, uh, since you brought that specific program trading part of the uh, scenario up, I want to touch on this death of Ryan Henry Crane. He was the executive director of program trading at uh, J.P. Morgan. And this is the most mysterious, maybe, of all the deaths. It's the most recent one. We broke the news. Zero Hedge really flushed it out and uh, ran with it the following day, and the story went viral. He was 37 years old. He survived by a wife and a young son named Harry. And uh, according to the um, entries that people were leaving at the funeral home online, uh, leaving their sympathies, it was a sudden and unexpected death. And there has been an absolute lockdown in the media. Uh, Really worldwide, nobody knows how this man died. And uh, they're saying the cause of his death is pending a toxicology report. But um, when you talk about these people who are doing the program trading, you talk about these people at the highest levels within the criminal banks having stories to tell if they were to be prosecuted, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to come to the conclusion that these people are being knocked off when they die suddenly and against uh, all statistical probability. You're a statistics guy, Rob Kirby. What are the chances that these men are dropping dead at young ages unexpectedly by nail guns? Well, listen, Sean, uh, actually, to, just to set the record straight, I'm not really a statistics guy. I, I'm, uh, I'm an economics person, and, I, and the, the brand of economics that, that I've been practicing for the last 11 years is forensic economics. But what I can give you is a little bit of firsthand uh, sort of uh, uh, commentary and that I worked in, 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 a, in a brokerage firm where our our clients were basically the international bankers. Like I dealt directly with the treasuries of major banks around the world. And 
I can tell you that a 30-something-year-old executive director of program trading at J.P. Morgan probably is earning between three and ten million dollars a year, and that's just a guess. And I might, I might, you know, I'm, I'm guessing probably three million anyway, and more uh, with it with a young kid. All I'm saying is these guys have everything to live for, and and the notion that these kind of people uh, that are that flush, uh, you know materially and, and basically have everything to live for. These are not the kind of people that you, you, you'd anticipate uh, uh, going out and committing suicide. The other thing that I would draw, because you, you spoke in referencing this, uh, if, if uh, institutions were going to be questioned or if there were investigations, the, the reality is there is a body in doing in, uh, real investigations. Uh, and that, that body, its, its name is Baffin. Baffin's an adjunct of the finance ministry in Germany. And they have, uh, they have sharp teeth. And uh, they've been involved in uh, uh, uncovering uh, wrongdoings in the financial universe uh, on occasions in the past. And, uh, the, you know, they swing a pretty big, uh, pretty big club. And all I can suggest to you is if uh, with the kind of investigations that Baffin has already gone public and said that they're they're conducting, the, the these are the very people that they would probably have very 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 high on their list to want want to uh, interview and want would want to talk to, and wh whether there's elements within within uh, J P Morgan uh, uh, at the higher higher level that don't want these people talking to regulators, I can't say for sure, but you know. Like you don't have to be a genius to try and connect some of these dots, and and isn't it interesting that for I think it was maybe five years that allegedly the CFTC had uh, you know was conducting uh, allegations of uh, silver market manipulation of which J P Morgan was alleged to be more or less uh, at the center of uh, no no banker no bankers getting knocked off then. But the minute, and, and I mean, the CFTC is an inept institution. It's a shill institution. It's an institution that shills for the Federal Reserve and shills for the U.S. Treasury. And it isn't interesting that once the once an, uh, an entity like Baffin, once they're on the job, suddenly these bankers start dropping like flies. That stands out in my in my mind and in my head, uh, front and center. And uh, isn't it isn't it amazing when there's real investigation, how when the heat gets turned up, these guys start disappearing and dying? Yeah. In addition to that, Interpol is reportedly crawling all over Deutsche Bank. And you'd recall that a banker was found hanged in his London flat. And it turned out to be William Brokesmit, who, uh, you know, was a high level executive at Deutsche Bank. Um, you know, you mentioned Boffin uh, investigating and asking real questions, whereas the CFTC in our own country will not. Um, it's one of the regulators at Boffin who said that precious metals manipulation is really probably as bad as LIBOR, certainly as serious as the LIBOR manipulation. So you're right, the heat is truly being turned up, I think, all over the world. Now, I don't know if Interpol is... Um, is any more uh, honorable than the FBI. I mean, the FBI, if they were doing an investigation, they could probably help cover a lot of things up. Uh, what's your take on Interpol and uh, in, you know, any authority they might have? Well, listen, if Interpol is indeed uh, engaged in, in, you know, in, in, uh, in, in this investigation, that to me would, would go hand in hand with the notion uh, uh, that Baffin is doing their investigations, because my view is that if 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 Baffin were to find wrongdoing, or if Baffin were were, were to uh, to place to, to try and charge anybody, my guess is that they would probably use the services or the offices of Interpol to to conduct uh, those kind of charges or to lay those kind of charges. Uh, my my understanding of what Baffin uh, does w would involve or, or could involve uh, anything up to and including, uh, 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 you know, involving the world court in the Hague. So the, the notion that you'd have an international body like Interpol involved in, 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 in this sort of thing uh, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. 
And, and all that being said, Sean, I don't think anybody from Interpol is actually uh, going to acknowledge that they're that they're involved in any of this in any manner, shape, or form. My my guess is that if anything does actually come uh, of the of the Baffin slash Interpol, uh, I think that it'll probably come or it'll appear to most uh, as as a as a lightning bolt out of a clear blue sky if, as, and when. They happen to or ever do swoop in and and uh, lay charges and start rounding people up. I can only hope that that happens, by the way, because uh, in my view, we have had some of the most well, not you know what I'm going to even just just say there have been uh, utterly egregious, uh, off the charts fraud c committed in our uh, international capital markets. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that most of this has come from the uh, Anglo-American centric uh, uh, controllers of, of the of the financial system, and you know the sooner the sooner we recognize this and and try to deal with this, uh, the sooner we're gonna have a chance to to normalize our our uh, <laughs> ridiculously uh, malfunctioned. Uh, global financial markets. It's funny that, that Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States, has said that we cannot prosecute these people because if we did, that the entire system would come crashing down. I find that to be very interesting in, in light of what you just said. When is the fraud going to end? I mean, we've got the the head attorney, the main person that's supposed to be prosecuting these people and going after them, is saying, well, we're not today. The chief not... law enforcement officer in the United States who will not yes. prosecute or get to the bottom of Fast and Furious or IRS uh, investigations of Tea Party groups. Uh, I mean, it's, boy, we're, we got our back up against the wall. If, uh, if that's the chief law enforcement officer in our own country, we are. We're screwed. In my, in my view, Eric Holder's made a mockery of his own office. Yes. Yeah, he has, and he goes back to the Oklahoma City cover-up. Uh, if anybody would like to Google that, they'll find that that's true. He was involved in uh, the Oklahoma City bombing cover-up. So he's earned his stripes uh, with this cabal. Hey, uh, Rob, what is your take on the fact that in 2013, according to Zero Hedge, the Fed bought 150% more treasuries than all foreigners combined? <laughs> I guess when we say that the buyer of last resort is the Federal Reserve, that's actually what we're seeing now. It's quantifiable, and uh, that, I think, is the absolute ultimate sign of the end game, isn't it? Well, listen, the, 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 the bond market, uh, the bond market is, a, is, is a complete train wreck of a fraud and has been for many years. The, this, this whole, this whole bull, bull crap that we've heard for the last year and a bit about the the importance of tapering you know we had the 10-year bond back up in yield by 100 basis points on the threat of taper and taper was finally announced in mid June or mid December of 2013 which is just a couple months ago and since they've actually announced the taper the 10-year bond has rallied from a from a high of around 305 just over 3% to where it currently is at around 275 and we and we've been lower so the whole the whole idea that when the fed would announce tapering of their of their QE or their or their bond purchases uh, would cause a backup in rates is really a false narrative and 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 the reason it's a false narrative is because the whole QE program uh, as it was Fed to us by the by the uh, Fed and and the, and the and the Treasury, the the whole QE program had nothing to do with buying bonds to keep rates low. The whole object to QE was and 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 here you got to remember QE uh, uh, at its height of around eighty five billion dollars in purchases a month involved uh, roughly a fifty fifty split buying uh, uh, mortgage backed paper. And, and, and the U.S. Treasuries. And the, the U.S. Treasuries were added into that mix because they couldn't have had QE and just said it was to buy mortgage bonds because that would have, would have led people to make the inescapable conclusion that the, 
uh, U.S. banks who ho were holding all of this mortgage paper were, were all insolvent, and the U.S. banking system was insolvent. And and what 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 Q or this QE uh, uh, allowed the Fed to do was to effectively take. Uh, triple-A rated mortgage paper that the banks couldn't sell to anyone. It allowed them to extricate it from the bank's balance sheets, and now it's all siloed at the Federal Reserve. So, you know, it's, it's in, in one way, it's like taking money out of one pocket or one taking nuclear waste out of one pocket and putting it into another pocket where maybe, maybe with, a, with a lead lining. But uh, needless to say, this whole QE thing was never about Fed buying bonds to keep rates down because they have other means to keep rates down that they've been using for years. And that's namely the interest rate swap complex that they use to affect low rates in the long end of the bonds. But this specific QE that, that they're now talking about tapering was designed uh, particularly uh, to, to allow the uh, Federal Reserve to get these toxic mortgage bonds off off of uh, the the books of the banks who who held them, and this and this this all relates back to where the where the beginnings of the uh, 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 whole financial crisis started, which was in early two thousand and seven. Bear Stearns blew up. Because, because they had a couple of hedge funds that they were running in, inside their institution that were loaded up on uh, subprime mortgage paper. The subprime mortgage paper had been rated AAA, and it failed. It was the first time in the history of bonds that AAA-rated paper failed. And that caused the ensuing credit crisis when, when commercial paper froze up the uh, commercial paper market froze up in, in the summer of 2007. And, and that all precipitated into the uh, interbank uh, lending market freezing up and banks not being able to borrow money even on an overnight basis in the interbank market. And that's when the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury hit the panic button and instigated uh, 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 many trillions of dollars worth of short-dated uh, uh, swap instruments called FRAs initially through J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan strapped on in the third quarter of 2007, they strapped on seven or eight trillion dollars worth of short-dated FRAs uh, uh, that all matured within three months. These, these instruments require credit. And there was no credit being extended to any bank as evidence that banks couldn't borrow overnight money in the, in the overnight market. And the notion that J.P. Morgan would be able to put on $7 trillion worth of these short-dated interest uh, rate products uh, that require credit it, it, with anyone other than the U.S. Treasury uh, is, is absolutely a non-starter. And, 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 and when they did these trades... When they did these trades, the Treasury did these short-dated FRA trades with J.P. Morgan. The hedge for J.P. Morgan, because they were priced at yields under where uh, Treasury bills were, were, were yielding, and, and uh, uh, how J.P. Morgan locked in profits on those trades with the Treasury was to basically buy every short-dated Treasury bill that was available in the marketplace, trillions upon trillions of them. And this is what caused the cascade uh, in, in short-term rates uh, from roughly 3% down to, down to like the zero level where they are now. And this, was, this, this precipitated and caused the LIBOR crisis. And the, and, the, and the LIBOR crisis was absolutely a byproduct and a direct result of interventions of the U.S. Treasury's Exchange Stabilization Fund conducting short-dated uh, interest rates. Uh, the, I mean, FRAs are, are called a short-dated swap, or that's how they're classified uh, on the books of the banks. And, and when the Treasury did these trades with J.P. Morgan, this is what precipitated and caused the LIBOR crisis. The LIBOR crisis, we've been told and fed a lie by the mainstream for the last six or seven years that it was all about, it was all London-centric. This was not London centric at all. This was that, and 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 it was evidence when the TED spread blew out, 
Uh, and the TED, uh, the TED spread is the difference in yield in, in the three-month Treasury bill and the three-month Eurodollar contract. The three-month Eurodollar contract is, is a product of LIBOR. It's three-month Eurodollar contract settles against LIBOR on the third Wednesday of the contract month. And, and LIBOR, of course, is set in, in, uh, in, in London. But the LIBOR rate, which LIBOR stands for London Interbank Offered Rate, and what that is supposed to reflect is where the banks are willing to lend their most their most corporate uh, uh, their their most credit worthy corporate customers, uh, as in where they're willing to offer uh, uh, loans, short dated loans to their top corporate customers. And the the T bill uh, uh, is is basically where the government can raise money or borrow money in the three month period, the three month T bill, and when when the Treasury did these short dated swap trades to try basically what they were trying to do was thaw the the frozen credit markets by plunging T bill rates. So when they plunged the T bill rates down, banks banks that didn't mean banks wanted to lend. So the T bill rates were cascading down because JP Morgan was being given trades they couldn't lose on with the US Treasury on the other side of it. And they were buying the T-bills to lock in the profit, which caused the T-bill rate to plunge. Meanwhile, the, the uh, uh, Eurodollar futures, which are reflective of banks' willingness to lend, they remained high, and they initially wanted to go higher. That caused the, 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 the TED spread to, to balloon out to about 400 basis points from its customary 25 basis points. And that, that's when commentary first appeared in the market saying that LIBOR was broken because, because the euro dollar, like the, the, the euro dollar, three month euro dollar rates, which are reflective of where banks will lend, wasn't falling in tandem with the T bill rate. And this was a contrivance. This, this was forced on the market by the US Treasury. And you know it, it's 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 so clear, and 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 they've left a footprint because all this all this is recorded for posterity's sake in the quarterly uh, in the quarterly derivatives fact sheets published by the Office of the Controller of the Currency of, of the United States of America, and you can you can go into the archives and you can look and see what they did. They've it's like it's like they left a trail of breadcrumbs or footprints in the snow. And by and by looking at these numbers, you can see exactly what they did, and 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 that is what they did. So well, the, the whole notion, the, the, this, it, I mean, listen, we've just been sold lie upon lie upon lie upon lie, right? And and it's all fraud. It is. So, it, and you noted earlier in the interview, Jeffrey Christian, who would probably say that none of this is, is actually fraudulent. And he would say that LIBOR collusion isn't a big deal or maybe never happened. Jeffrey Christian should put on a polka dot suit and a red nose and go join a circus. Well, he's Jeff, irrelevant. Jeffrey Christian doesn't know what he's talking about. No, I know. But my point is, is he's irrelevant because what we see is a trail of breadcrumbs leading back to Deutsche Bank in the LIBOR manipulation and JP Morgan. You know, in this last bit that you've been uh, talking, you probably mentioned the name JP Morgan a dozen times. I mean, all all signs point to JP Morgan as being one of the very heads at the tippy top of this criminal banking pyramid. And I just want to read for people who maybe don't understand the big picture because what they get in the mainstream media is this idea that Bernie Madoff is the worst arch criminal in the history of banking and uh, high finance, right? That's what the sheeple are fed. Now, let me read this. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon sued over knowledge of Madoff fraud. Two senior officials at J.P. Morgan Chase and & Company and predecessor companies repeatedly confronted Bernard Madoff over irregularities in his business, a new lawsuit said, and suggested the bank leaders had direct knowledge of his Ponzi scheme. The lawsuit filed in federal court in Manhattan on Wednesday on behalf of shareholders against Chief Executive Jamie Dimon and 12 other current and former executives and directors was based in part by statements made by Madoff himself during a series of interviews. Quote, J.P. Morgan was uniquely positioned for 20 years to see Madoff's crimes and put a stop to them, the lawsuit said. Uh, <laughs> I think that you've painted a very good picture of the criminality that we're up against, Rob, and uh, this story about Madoff and, and his crimes being covered up by the bank he was doing business with 
That's what we're up against. Epic criminality and no law enforcement. Absolutely, Sean. And the whole notion, the whole notion that J.P. Morgan could have a derivatives book the size it is, and uh, up, up until this London whale issue uh, back a year or two ago, J.P. Morgan had gone something like 11 years without reporting a quarterly loss in their uh, in their derivatives, uh, you know, arising from their derivatives activity. And I'm just going to tell you the odds the odds of having you know uh, 40 40 quarters in a row when you have a book that big, uh, 40 quarters in a row without a loss is probably about the same odds as you you know calling heads or tails on a coin flip 40 times in a row correct. And I mean, if you know anything about, about odds and, in, 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 you know, gambling or doing that, you know, it just doesn't happen. It, it, it's impossible. You, 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 you can't, you can't, no, no, no financial institution. And then you see, and the reason why JP Morgan didn't have, didn't have a loss for 40 quarters in a row is because it, it, what is occurring is the U.S. monetary policy is being is being uh, implemented through their trading desk, with with the Federal Reserve in the middle acting as the broker. So I mean, when you you see when you know the outcome of of uh, you, you don't need to be a brilliant bond trader to know that rates are going down when your trading desk is the one that's implementing U.S. monetary policy. Right. Because you de facto know, and you can front run everything, everything that, that's coming, you can front run it. That's why you never have a loss. Where do we go with, with all of this, Rob? I mean, where, as far as the criminal banksters that you've just painted this incredible picture? Well, I'll, I'll the, tell you what fraud. we all need to pray for. Uh, we, well, here's what we need to pray for. We need to pray for an institution like Baffin. With with international assistance from an from an outfit like Interpol, you know, gets real and lays some indictments and starts rounding some of these people up, because what what's been what's been done here is high financial crimes against humanity. Yes. And 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 and, and we need some action taken on this. Otherwise, this continues. So, are they going to? Are do you do you think that that they're going to crash the system or? Do you see the? Um, They've already the, crashed the, the system, technically well, speaking. But, well, but I mean, it, but there's this slow burn, as uh, uh, Catherine Austin Fit uh, calls it, that is continuing. I mean, are they just going to continue to bleed the global patient, or you know, of, of all the resources? I mean, I know that the yeah. system is broken, but as far as it's still functioning, you know, there's still dollars in the system, there's still euros in the systems, there's still all of this, are they going to crash and burn and push us into SDRs or something else? Well, uh, you know what, Rory, your question is a really good one. And uh, I'm, I'm not an advocate, uh, frankly, I'm not an advocate of the, uh, let's, let's say the, uh, the alternate powers in the universe which in our universe today I'm going to suggest is, is the, the Asian players, the Chinese, uh, the, uh, uh, the Russians, and increasingly the Germans mm -hmm. who've really had it rubbed in their face regarding their own gold bullion and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the keepsake uh, uh, of, their, of their bullion by the, by the U.S. Fed. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest to you that while we may have been uh, witnessing uh, what Catherine Fitz refers to as a slow burn for some time now. I don't think going forward, the uh, the slow burn idea is going to sit well with with uh, with the Russians, the Germans, or the Chinese, because I'll just I'm going to say to you, the Russians, the Germans, and the Chinese, uh, as evidenced by Baffin's investigations, are very aware of the criminality of the Anglo-American uh, banking axis and how evil and corrupt they are. Yeah. And you see, the Anglo-American banking access uh, has done nothing to engender confidence, uh, uh, you know, or, or to give anybody else in the world the, the view that they could be capable of doing the right thing uh, or, or the decent thing uh, going forward. So, uh, you know, it's, 
there, there comes a point where they're going to, they're, I do believe they're going to throw, throw down their gloves and they're just going to, or they're going to take their gloves off and they're going to say, let's have at it. Because do you think that's why, do you, I'm sorry, do you think that that's why China is, is acquiring as much gold? I mean, they, they basically took all of the global per, mine. Well, sure it is. Yes, yes, Rory. That, and that's also why China is, as, as, uh, uh, I think as of uh, December of last year, China had negotiated, I think it was 22 separate bilateral uh, currency swap uh, arrangements with, with counterparties uh, totaling uh, around $2.5 trillion worth. I mean, you know, China China's d- 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 not playing playing the game with, with uh, you know, with, with the Americans. And increasingly... Uh, I think you're going to see the, the Germans being digging their heels in and being and being a lot more strident. Uh, I mean, the Germans have been ripped off. Yes, uh, they've been ripped, and, uh, and I mean the 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 you know the the confidence that the German people have in their own financial uh, uh, leadership of their own central bank has uh, has taken a severe hit. And uh, you know, German people are asking questions, and there's a lot of upset people in Germany. And uh, just just as recently, there is now a lot of upset people in uh, in Russia with with regards to uh, the the West is is clearly and documentedly uh, fomenting a very uh, uh, difficult situation on Russian doorstep in Ukraine. That's right. The, the the protests against the protests against the government in the Ukraine have been have been instigated, funded. And, and 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 fomented by the West, George Soros specifically, yeah. Yes, exactly. And and I mean, you know, this is the sort of thing America would be jumping, would be jumping up and down and screaming to, to everybody in the world with if anybody was trying to do such a thing, say in a place like say Cuba. You know, and there's there's history there. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's it's uh, uh, the rest of the world isn't going to put up with this uh, with this two faced. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Attitude that, that's coming. Uh, that's coming out of the West. It doesn't work. You see, uh, like I mean, I'm from the West. You know, I'm I'm a Canadian. Listen, I'm a Canadian. I grew up being very conservative politically. I'm now a political atheist because I see no difference between what we perceive to be the left or what we're told are the left or the and the right in, in the West. Uh, I, w- I was a Reagan flag waver. Uh, as a Canadian in my in my teenage and uh, you know university years, and I'll just tell you something: we used to have the moral high ground in the West because you know we were we were we looked upon ourselves anyways being the good guys. I hate to tell you guys, we're not the good guys anymore. We also and it def- hurts me to say it. No, I know it does. You and I have had this conversation before. We've talked with you before. It, it breaks your heart to see the United States that really used to be a beacon for truth and liberty on, on the on the planet. Um, of course, those of us that know about the Federal Reserve in 1913, we know it's been a slippery slope. But still, uh, you know. We no longer are that. We, th- that is the guys they use to take us into wars of imperialism when they say we're spreading democracy, we're spreading liberty, <laughs> when the opposite is true. It's very Orwellian. So, Rob, we very much value your time. So in the moments that we have left, can we just round out what you think is going to happen in 2014 and beyond in gold? Are you surprised to see this uh, rally we've had in the medals? And, and what's your vision for the future here? Well, I am not surprised that the price of gold has started to creep back up. Um, you know, all that being said, on any given day, I think that the system uh, or the controllers of the system have the ability to knock the price of gold down any day they choose to. Uh, the only thing that maybe is a little different now than it was last year uh, when the price was higher is once you knock the price down to uh, basically the marginal cost of producing the next new ounce or the marginal cost of production, uh, in, in, in a world where the, the bad guys doing the price rigging are starved for physical metal, driving the price down below the marginal cost of production creates a bigger headache for the price riggers in that it takes 
uh, uh, takes supply off the market because if you if you knock the price of uh, producing an ounce, uh, if you knock the price of gold that someone can sell it for down below the cost of production, people start to shut in mine supply and they and they stop mining. And when people stop mining, that means less number of physical ounces coming to market. And that means that you're going to necessarily have less number of physical ounces you can squander to, to, to suppress the price. And, and, and it, isn't it interesting? That's roughly where this, this latest uh, boot kicking uh, that, the, that the gold price has had, basically the, the, uh, uh, the boot kicking stopped pretty much almost dead on the marginal cost of producing an ounce of both gold and silver, I might add. And, you know, so from here, I would, I would like to think that we could probably uh, 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 see uh, much higher prices uh, just based on the fact that, you know, everybody in the world or most, most countries in the world are now uh, buying uh, physical precious metal and, uh, and silver. And uh, I would say the outlook from here should, and should, be, uh, should be positive. And uh, and uh, as as this proceeds, I think the uh, I think the uh, credibility of the uh, of the of the Western uh, price riggers and, and their fiat money is going to encounter uh, more and more problems as we move forward. I like the outlook for metal going forward. Well, we do too, and uh, and we always like listening to your outlook, uh, Rob. Um, everybody, you can catch Rob's work firsthand. I think you're going to have to pay for it, though, over at KirbyAnalytics.com. Rob, do you want to discuss that a little bit? Yeah, no, I'm on the web at KirbyAnalytics.com, and every now and then I get the pleasure to speak to people like you, Sean, and Rory. Well, thank you so much, and uh, you know, you nailed it earlier in the interview. We always like to come up with a title for these things that is uh, gripping and honest and not misleading, and I think you nailed it earlier in the interview when you said, these are high financial crimes against humanity, and that will be the title for this interview, and our uh, guest has been Rob Kirby. Rob, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. Take care, buddy. Yep. Be good. Right. We'll talk to you again soon. Yep. Cheers.